Hey, Juan, so glad you could join me here on Zoom on, on such short notice. Me in Brazil, you in Spain, and the crypto markets moving fast. Hey, Martin, it's good to see you as always, my friend. Yeah, you watch the markets like a hawk, and I've been watching you like a hawk. <laughs> and man, oh man, <laughs> you really nailed it. You said a major landmark event would happen on January 10th, and that's exactly the day it happened. You said that on that day, the SEC would approve BlackRock's first ever e ETF, the first ever to buy actual Bitcoin. And the SEC approved it on that day. You said the SEC would also approve ETFs by several other major Wall Street players. And the SEC actually approved a total of, what, 11 uh, different um, providers, not just BlackRock, which manages about $10 trillion in assets, but also Wall Street giants like Fidelity, Franklin Templeton, Invesco, Van Eck, Wisdom Tree, Grayscale. I think Grayscale is actually the most important one because Grayscale actually has the most Bitcoin right now. I have two urgent questions for you today. And these are urgent questions that are coming from investors. What happens next? And what's your strategy to go for gains that could be better than what an investor could make in a Bitcoin ETF, for example? A Bitcoin ETF just buys and holds Bitcoin, right? That's correct. And that's not a bad idea, is it? And if you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin back in 2010, when it first started trading, you would have about $700 million today. You're not saying we can do that again, are you? I'm not saying that at all. Uh, but what I am saying is that $700 million is based purely on buying Bitcoin. I'm not just buying Bitcoin, keep in mind. And this $700 million return is based purely on buy and hold. But we do a lot more than buy and hold. So tell us more about that before we're done with this Zoom call. The question is, what's next? Martin, what's next is this great crypto convergence that I've been talking about. It's these three major forces that are all happening roughly at the same time. The first bullish force is the Bitcoin ETFs. Is that behind us? Martin, no, it's just begun. With BlackRock alone, we could be looking at $5 billion invested into Bitcoin, and that's just one issuer. We also have Grayscale, which has one of the largest piles of Bitcoin uh, that any investor has. Uh, or already fund. And so the ETF being approved itself, it, this is not what the uh, major event is. The reason this ETF is such a big deal is because it opens the door for a massive amount of money entering the crypto markets. And that is yet to be seen. So um, you said 5 billion in Bitcoin that BlackRock could be buying, right? And th that 5 billion represents only a tiny fraction of the $10 trillion that they manage. Absolutely. It's just a tiny fraction, and this is what it's expected to be invested over a short period of time. The impact on the market that that influx of money is going to have is yet to happen. It will happen over the next few weeks and months. To me, the bigger story is that the SEC has approved all 11 ETFs, all 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs. And there's simply not enough physical Bitcoin for all of them. Realistically, there's only about one or two million Bitcoins that are available, physical Bitcoins that are available to purchase at any given time. And so if you do the math, uh, even if you distributed this Bitcoin evenly, there's not enough for even one of them to have, let's say, a million Bitcoins under their their stash. So the bigger story is there's going to be massive competition now amongst major Wall Street institutions to source physical Bitcoin. And there's just not a lot of it. And Bitcoin has programmatic supply. It's not going to increase just because the CTFs have been issued. Regardless of that, as investors, the reason this is so exciting is there's going to be a lot of demand for Bitcoin going forward, and there's just not enough supply. The only way that adjusts is for prices to surge. Mm -hmm. For me as an investor, this changes everything. I look at Fidelity, for example. I have a Fidelity account. I've had it for years. So now all I have to do is just log in, as I always do. I click on the buy button, as I always do, and presto, I own Bitcoin. I mean, after all these years of struggling with exchanges and weird websites and wallets and God knows what else, it's, it's hard to believe that I can do it just by a, a click, single click on Fidelity. What an amazing change that is. And what does that really all mean? 
cannot overstate how limited the, the actual physical supply of Bitcoin is. And we also have virtually unlimited demand from, from institutional investors and more traditionally minded investors. What this all translates into is a surge in prices. And that's just one of the three factors that are converging. What are the others? The Bitcoin halving, which is expected to happen sometime around late April. Typically, the way this happens is Bitcoin surges into the date of the halving, then there's a bit of a correction, and then the big surge takes place. And the halving, from what I understand, what it does, it cuts the availability or the cuts the flow of new supplies into the market by half, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Virtually unlimited demand from institutional investors for this asset. And on top of that, the new supply of Bitcoin is going to get cut in half come April, which historically has made the price of Bitcoin surge. So combine the ETF, uh, which leads to all of this demand with the fact that new supply of Bitcoin is gonna get cut in half and you have a recipe for an explosive crypto market you have the ETF approval, you have the halving. What's the third thing that is part of this convergence you're talking about? The third thing is my timing model. And specifically it's time, it's the crypto cycle. And the crypto cycle turned in late 2022. Then we had this consolidation phase uh, throughout all of 2023 that ended actually uh, in Q4 of 2023. And what we have now is the very early stages of the 2024, 2025 crypto bull market, which based on the first two factors, having an ETF being approved, I expect this four year cycle, which is like I said, it's just turning up to be one of the best ever in, in the history of crypto. So even without the, the ETF approval, even without the having, the cycle has been for it to be moving upward around this time. What are the immediate opportunities you see right now? I see three main opportunities. Number one, like I said, as the ETF got approved, Bitcoin has gone into a bit of a correction, which I expect to be short-lived. So you can pick up Bitcoin at a relative discount, about 15, 20% discount right now. The second bigger opportunity that I see is on Ethereum. You see, on the day that the ETF got approved, Bitcoin did not do anything, but Ethereum surged by 10%. So the ratio of Ethereum to Bitcoin has surged by about 20% since the ETF got approved. Now, why is that? That is because investors are looking forward to a spot Ether ETF being approved by the SEC. The normal part of this crypto cycle is when the bull market accelerates, uh, uh, investors begin rotating out of the safer asset, which is Bitcoin, and they start going into Ethereum. But it doesn't stop there. And this is the third opportunity that I see. Once money pours into Ethereum, investors begin to look uh, for more opportunities elsewhere in the crypto world. And this is when the altcoins begin surging. And Martin, most of the, mon the most money in crypto can be made from picking and investing in the right altcoins. And we're starting that phase now.